So when I was shuffling out this spread for you, um, I saw this image. Uh, you have some really good cards, by the way, and uh, the energy is very buoyant and very playful. So I really like this spread. Um, but let me talk to you about the image. So I see the scene at the museum. There's this big, big um, portrait of this um, Venetian lady. She's she's like a, a royalty, okay, um, from the Renaissance period. And she's wearing a crown and she has a scepter. She's holding a scepter and she's wearing like, uh, you know, just really, really bright reds and gold. So her clothing is very decadent. She's sitting down and uh, so it's a picture, a painting of this woman. It's, it's huge. And there's a velvet rope around it. And there are so many people gathered around the uh, velvet rope looking at this picture of this woman. And, um, you know, it, 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 I, I see her eyes start moving. It's almost like the picture is coming to life. The woman in the picture is um, becoming real. So whereas she was, you know, two-dimensional, now she's three-dimensional. And then, like, her face starts protruding out from the, the, uh, the, plat, the flat canvas. And then her arms poke out and then she comes to life and she just like walks out of the picture frame. And when she walks out, the crowd is just like, wow, they weren't scared. They didn't run for their lives, you know, because she's big and the, the, she's a lot bigger than the average person. They weren't scared. They just, they were just in awe. And so she walks away from it. And then she leaves this um, indentation of herself uh, where she was, she used to be in the picture. So when I saw this, I was just like, uh, you know, either you have a lot of people that are uh, gathering around you, admiring you, or the confidence that you're getting about your own capabilities, about your own self-worth, about your own, um, just your own sense of confidence is being bolstered up because other people believe in you. So I feel like there's this uh, really nice energy here about coming to life, feeling rejuvenated, feeling revitalized, feeling like we can do anything. And especially um, having that sense of um, that sense of community gathering around us in order to give us strength to come alive again. OK, so um I do sense this uh, this community. It, it's almost like the the something is being ignited in you, where you feel like you you feel like whole again. You feel like yourself again, and especially you feel like you believe in yourself. You believe that you are real, and so you're you know coming to life. So a lot of coming to life imagery. Um, in conjunction with the spread, what we do have here is you have some new passions that are being stirred up in your life. And this spread is very work. Well, it, it's I always try to, you know, uh, figure out work in a spread, mainly because uh, a lot of people are, you know, concerned about their work, especially right now. So um, let me talk about whatever comes up first. OK, so the first four cards. There is a person in your life that you're very attracted to. I'm sensing that. And you get very weak in the knees when you're around this person. You get very shy when you're around this person or when you're interacting with them. And um, I almost feel like when you get shy and when you don't know what to say, when you get tongue tied, I feel like you try to say something to mask how you feel or to downplay your emotions or to steer the conversation in a specific way so that it doesn't make you uncomfortable. OK, so I feel this shyness, this um, discomfort, not in a bad way. It, it's just you're dealing with somebody that you really like. They stir some deep feelings in you, passion and chemistry, but also um shyness coming from you which is very rare for Sagittarius but I feel like all of this is never displayed it's never shown um you know you don't purposely show the other person this um but I feel like deep down you're very shy so what we have here is the ace of wands okay so this is the beginning of a, a brand new spark of passion where it's almost like coming to life, the birthing process, the process of creating something, making something happen and becoming real. OK, so I feel like it's the beginning of something. Somebody is stirring these feelings within you. And this is the shyness that I was mentioning. 
what do I do in this situation? I feel weak in the knees. I feel a little bit uncomfortable. I feel a little bit out of my, uh, my element. This is like questioning our, uh, our lovability, questioning, does the other person feel the same way? Am I showing too much on my uh, facial expressions? Can they look at me and know how I feel about them? Should I hide it? So you have a lot of these just questions um, churning in your head, okay? And a lot of it has to do with the other person. The energy of the other person is the emperor. This is somebody who is, I feel, a lot older than you. So there might be a significant age difference. I also feel that you are really missing this person. There's probably a uh, distance, either emotional distance or uh, geographical distance. Okay. It seems like they're in, you know, two different lands. Okay. And the two of wands is usually long distance relationships. This is somebody who is very, very, very intelligent and they can be male or female. The cards are not gender specific, but, um, Someone who's very regal, probably very attractive, very uh, good looking. You know, the classic beauty, like um, they could be classically handsome, classically beautiful. It's somebody that most people would consider very attractive. And I feel like this is somebody who is, um, they're, they're not in their emotions. They're, they're, they're very rational. The emperor is somebody that thinks with his head. He thinks very, very logically. Um, he's very intelligent. He's very good at problem solving, at delegating, at leading people, and he's very, very courageous. So this is somebody who is a creative thinker. They think outside the box. They solve problems. They don't mind getting their hands dirty. They have a lot of admirable qualities, but I feel like there is a lot of physical attraction associated with this person. Because Sagittarius, especially if you are, uh, if you are dating men in particular, Sagittarius who are dating men, you could be male or female, Sagittarius is a very masculine sign. So for Sagittarius women, you're a very masculine sign. And um, when it comes to the, the people that you are interested in or attracted to, you need somebody that can kind of know how to handle you. You need somebody who is classically very, very masculine. And I feel like this is the epitome of it. Okay. This is somebody who's externally and internally very strong, very certain, very sure of him or herself. And so this is the person you would be incredibly physically attracted to. If there was like an archetype, this is the person that would draw in a lot of Sagittarians because they know how to hold their own. They don't bend to anybody's will. They're a little bit of a challenge and you like a little bit of a challenge and uh, very stubborn as well. Um, so here's where things kind of, uh, take a detour. I see there's a lot of teasing back and forth between you and this person. Okay. So if this is like a relationship partner, if you're together, um, I feel like there's a lot of clashes. Okay. So like, uh, clashes of egos. This is not somebody that bends. Okay. And I feel like, um, it's, it could be a little bit frustrating, like a love hate type of a deal with this person where you don't see eye to eye. And then when you get into an argument, it becomes very heated where you have to take a time out. Okay. And then I also feel this is somebody that you're not in a relationship with that you're interested in. This is a person that teases you. I see a very playful energy about him in this spread where he might say things to purposely aggravate you or she, there's a teasing back and forth banter. And I feel like this is somebody who's actually very attracted to you too. And so there's this back and forth. And I feel like both parties are just as stubborn about concealing their emotions. So I see this person, you know, um, poking fun at you or uh, doing things to kind of uh, get a rise out of you. Um, and then you get angry and you get upset and you walk away and then you inevitably come back. So walking away, getting upset, but then always coming back because the draw from this person is very, very, very strong. Um, I see a lot of physical connection and, um, chemistry. It's, it's really strong. And, um, the other person, they're not aware of how you feel about them. Okay. So, um, if you're wondering, they're not aware of how you feel about them. And that's why they're taking this approach with you because the emperor, 
Um, he is very, I want to say he's very um, at home in the realm of reason, rationality, uh, strategizing, as well as, you know, moving plans forward, leading people. But when it comes to more of the emotional realm, it would be more like the empress. She's at home, right? She's the hearth and the home and the children and the emotions and the softness. So this is not somebody who's soft, okay? They don't know how to deal with, they don't know how to, you know, go up and say like, oh, how was your weekend? How's your mom? How's your dad? That's not them. That's not what they do. What they ask is, you know, how are you? How's work? How's your... I don't know how's your car how's you know they they ask about the physical things they don't ask about the emotions so if you're wondering why are they behaving like this why are they kind of poking fun at me why are they joking around like this um, it's because they don't really know how you feel about them and they're trying to get an emotional response from you in any way that they can just so they can gauge how you're feeling and so if you're dealing with that situation, maybe that will help, okay? Maybe coming back like this, you know, um, downcast and vulnerable and just letting your guard down, maybe this will um, soften their energy a little bit, okay? So I feel like no matter what, you inevitably always comes back to this. And because of it, I would say that I, I feel it's a really strong pull from this person. They pull you back in. They reel you back. And then I also feel like for some of you, there might be, you know, once again, you're being admired. You're coming to life. Um, Jupiter, the planet of luck, is also in your sign. And um, so what I feel is it, it, it draws out this magnetism within you and other people are drawn to it. So people will be very drawn to you. So I feel like some of you have two suitors. This person and this person. Okay, so we have the Hierophant and the Emperor and their embodiments of people, especially the way that I read this uh, spread and the, the cards with this deck. So one person is very relationship oriented very relationship oriented. Um, I call it like the serial monogamous, somebody who goes from one relationship to the next. They need to have somebody by them, uh, by their side and they don't, they don't want to be on their own. Um, they'd rather be in like a bad relationship as long as they're in a relationship. So this is somebody I feel like you need to be a little bit careful about and I feel you are careful. This is your energy. You have a baseball bat. It's like you're you're keeping it there just in case they try to make a move, just in case they try to, you know, make a pass at you or just in case they um they overstep their boundaries. So I feel like there is somebody that's trying to get your attention and the way that they do it is um they sh try to show you how accomplished they are. They try to show you, you know, uh, what car they drive, how much property they own, how much money they make. And they, they put on an air almost like they're very self-assured. But I feel like deep down, they're very, very afraid to be on their own. And Sagittarius people are, you guys love your independence. So when you approach this person, you will sense the insecurities, okay? I, I feel like it emanates from them, the insecurity, the need to be in a relationship. And um, you're going to see through it. So I want you to be a little bit careful about this person. And then if you're dealing with both, your heart is definitely here, but there's somebody trying to get your attention over here. They're both trying to get your attention, but there's somebody here that you should be weary about. Um... Aside from that, what I do sense here is um, if you are dealing with any type of a legality, uh, dealing with legal issues, court cases, unfinished business related to, you know, ownership, um, especially property or like settlements and disputes and things like that, but, you know, something court related, um, I feel like it's the last leg of the journey. So I feel for many of you, there's going to be some type of a closing out of a cycle. 
as well as uh, things being done in your favor or some type of a ruling in your favor. So I feel like it's either ending or it's pretty much the last leg of the journey. Okay, fight another day and then I feel like things are going to be turning in your favor. I have the Justice card here. And um, so what I'm feeling is it's going to prevail and it's going to be ruled in your favor. And so you don't have to worry at least about that part anymore. It's uh, it's going to come to a natural conclusion and it's going to be fine. OK, um, career and finances. You have you have two of the best cards in the deck here. I have the Wheel of Fortune and the Star. The Wheel of Fortune and the Stars. Um, what I feel is with the Wheel of Fortune and the Star, it signifies a situation where timing is just right. Okay, the Star indicates visibility, in, indicates fame and recognition and being in an environment where we feel like, it's like the Star leading the way. We feel like we belong. We feel like at home, at peace, and also we feel like we're constantly learning and evolving and kind of uh, growing to become like a better person. So in the work environment for some of you, um, I feel like for many of you in the past, you might have just, you know, drifted from one job to the next, trying to find your reason, trying to find, you know, the career path, trying to find out, like, where am I supposed to be? You know, what is my destiny when it comes to work? And I feel like you're at a point where some of you have already found that calling, where you want to go, and especially what, it, what um, type of work that you want to do, not only temporarily, but like almost as a career. So some of you have made it and some of you might be in the legal profession dealing with uh, legal cases and um, things like that. But and also teaching, too. But I feel it, it extends a little bit um, beyond that, because what I feel is whatever it is where you feel like very passionate about, you want to make a difference. And I also feel like it's not just about the fame, right? Not about the fame and the recognition. It's wanting to do something life changing. Okay. Wanting to, um, so it's not just a job where you go to work, clock in, clock out, and then you leave your work at home. You want work that is transformative. You want work that is meaningful. And I feel like many of you are coming into this month either with the realization of what that is or having already found a place where you feel like you belong and you feel like this is where I can make a career. Okay. So you have a lot of things that are kind of lined up for you and it took, you know, it, it might have taken some time um, and you might have doubted the process, but I feel like everything is falling into place in a very nice and serendipitous way because it was like, it, it was meant to happen, but the timing had to, it's like the universe had to tweak with the timing in order to let all the pieces fall into place just perfectly so that, you know, you don't question it. So I, I see many of you getting a lot of signs. Many of you are getting a lot of uh, synchronicities that signaling to you, this is the right choice, this is the right place, okay? Um, I don't see any pentacles card um, in here, but what I do feel is I, I don't, like, no news is good news. So I feel like it's indicating to me that, you know, everything else in your life is very stable. Um, the only thing that popped up is, you know, this one relationship that has you very, very weak in the knees and you don't really know what to do because I see this shyness, this, uh, reservation coming from you, not knowing what to do, feeling a little bit unsettled by the other person and feeling like the other person is so, you know, um, I, I see somebody who might be an authority figure, so they might be have a lot of status, a lot of prestige, a lot of money, a lot of wealth associated with them. And you don't care about those things. That's not why you like them. You like them because, you know, I feel like it's, it's yes, it's physical attraction, but there's something there. I guess it's their charisma that really draws you in. It's, it might also be their sense of morality. They're very straight-laced and they're just really, um, 
they're they have a good sense of integrity and they don't bend to other people they don't um they don't uh compromise their integrity and i feel like that's what you really like about them but i i just see this dynamic where someone is teasing you or making you feel very shy um and you're just not really sure how you should handle this connection so i see that element about you know apprehension but i definitely feel um you're really drawn to somebody. You're very, very attracted to another person. And uh, I feel like there's this push and pull, this constant struggle with the communication. Um, sharpening the tools, sharpening the knives, okay? The knives, the swords, um, they deal with communication. So I feel like you kind of have to roll with the punches and you have to, you know, keep your wits about you and... Uh, make some witty comments, have some some comebacks that are ready, because I feel like this is somebody that has a little bit of a teasing energy about them, because they're trying to get you to lighten up, they might feel that you're a little bit too serious. Yeah, I think like they feel like you're a little bit too serious. They feel like you're doing things the hard way rather than the smart way. They see you as someone who's very hardworking and they don't, they, they're like, there is a better way to do this. Um, so I feel like this will, will straighten itself out. If you soften your energy a little bit, if you're not so much of a workaholic, if you take the time to, you know, banter and, and, and have like lighthearted conversations. Okay. Don't read too much in between the lines with this person, because I feel like he or she is trying to, um, they're trying to get a rise out of you. I don't feel like it's in a bad way, but um, they're they're not taking themselves too seriously at this point. And so if you read in between the lines, it's going to drive you nuts and it's going to make you feel a lot more uncertain. Um, they just want to know how you feel. And so, you know, show them how you feel. Okay. So I will leave it at that, Sagittarius. I hope the reading is helpful.